What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Art Shack. So, today we got a real-time drawing tutorial. I know these are kind of few and far between, but uh, it's always easier to do a tutorial like this when it's uh, more of a simple drawing task. When I do something more detailed and in-depth, like my uh, you know full uh, landscapes, it's really tricky to do it in real time. Because the video would be like four hours long. <laughs> but, um... So I'm going to be drawing some clouds like I've been doing in my recent videos. Uh, I'm going to take you in real time on how to do it. And it's going to be the, the really detailed ones, the ones that look really cool. So what I'm going to be using to start out is just a 4B pencil. And I'm merely just going to be using this for like the initial sketch. And I am just uh, making like a puffy line mark on the tops of these um, just know that these marks right now are gonna be meaningless because uh, they're not gonna be, you're not gonna see them at all once I start getting really into this it's just so that I know where not to shade in because I do not want to shade where I want my clouds to be so I'll show you exactly how I, I get that stuff done so I'm just adding in some line work just so that I know where my clouds are going to be living in the sky. I usually keep this stage very, very loose. Like I said before, it's there's nothing to find at this point. It's just all rough work. And um, usually in my landscape videos, I'll draw like the immediate uh, distant landscape in very, uh, first. Um, in this case, let's just say, you know, there's some mountains in the background, you know, like this. I'll just have them rolling over, kind of like that. But I'm not going to be filling in any detail with that. Usually I will do this when I'm starting my landscape, and that's all I'll do. And then I immediately go in for the sky. So I'll leave the clouds like they are, just like this. Looks pretty good. So um, we're going to be doing some hatching with the 4B pencil. It works really well with the 4B because it's quite dark and it gives the picture a very dramatic look. So I'll start that here. And as you can probably see, it's quite dark. But when you use the uh, blending stump, it's going to get a pretty even tone it's gonna look nice and when you start bringing in some of the shadows to the clouds it's gonna bring it all together very nicely and uh, don't worry about going over your lines at all because uh, we're gonna be using some erasers to erase out the uh, the edges here and it'll all come together nicely in the end oh and just so everyone uh, I get this question a lot uh, what kind of paper do I use I've been using this type of paper a lot recently. It's a classic yellow. It's made by Canson. And I've always liked it. And I recently discovered that uh, Canson makes it in these hardcover sketchbooks, which I love because I can take them anywhere I want and not have to worry about the, the covers getting scuffed up and you know, the paper inside getting any damage at all. Because I don't like taking the, uh, the soft covered ones, uh, you know, from place to place because I don't like to risk them getting damaged and I also like the yellow paper because it really gives the uh, finished drawing a kind of like um an older look it makes it look aged which is a uh, an aspect that I really like notice how at the moment I'm only shading in one direction uh, depending upon how this shading comes out I may go back in a little bit darker. So I'll bring this all the way down to where these mountains are. And at the moment I'm just using these mountains as like a placeholder. Just so that I know how far to bring down the sky. Okay. 
Okay. Well, I'll see how this works out, and I'll go over here and grab my uh, blending stump. As you can see, it is quite dirty, but it doesn't matter. It works really well for this. Um, I'm actually going to bring a little bit more shading up in here really quick. All right. I don't want to get too picky with that. You know, this stage is just very, very rough. It doesn't really matter what, how it looks. And then with the blending stump, you want to work it into small circle, circular motions. It helps to give a nice even coating. It makes it look seamless. And it just gives it a nice smooth look. And this darker area will be the sky. And uh, I shaded a bit darker up here just to kind of give it a transition from uh, uh, dark to light when it gets closer to the horizon. And usually when I start getting to about this stage, um, I, I'll usually blend out the bottoms of the clouds. I don't want to have a sharp edge at all where these are. So I'll usually blend them out right away. Now I don't carry this blend up too high. I mean I can I can shade this whole thing in really dark just by how dirty this blending stump is. So I make sure to keep the transition relatively light. But I do shade in my clouds considerably, and then I go back in with an eraser to add in highlights. Now, you, you, if you all know me, um, I'll erase quite a bit in my drawings, but it's not so much to take away mistakes, but it's to add more detail. I think of an eraser as, a, as another drawing tool in my arsenal, you know, just to make my drawings more enhanced. And I'll show you one way that I do that in this drawing, which will be to add in more details for the clouds. All right, I'm still blending out the bottoms. Work at this section here. Okay, so this is a pretty rough stage of where I want it to be. And I'm still just working out the sky. Normally, uh, I would take a long time just blending out the sky just to make a nice, even uh, transition. Oh, and if your bottoms get a little bit too dark here, this is a blending cloth. As you can see, it is quite used up. And uh, just, if you can, just find a clean section on this thing. And if you work on the bottoms a bit, it'll take some of that uh, darkness out. It's kind of like an eraser, but it also blends at the same time. It's a multi-purpose tool. It's quite neat. And as you can see, it's making it a bit lighter as well as blending it. It's pretty cool. It's nifty. It's useful. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to start to uh, get my clouds a bit darker. Now I don't want to make them dark to the point that they're, they're going to look like raging storm clouds. That's not what I want to go for here. I will make them considerably dark, but don't worry, I'm going to be erasing quite a bit out of these. So one thing that I've learned with uh, drawing clouds, and I used to have a very hard time with making clouds, it took me a long time to lear learn this, is that uh, if you don't erase out these highlights, uh, it's not going to really have a real realistic look but even more so even if you do erase out those highlights if your clouds aren't dark enough to begin with 
those highlights won't even be seen and they'll be like rendered useless for the most part because uh, if there's no darkness you won't see enough of contrast to have that highlight so that's always something very important to keep in mind as you're drawing these okay so I'm gonna keep these kind of in a rough stage Okay, so this is probably the um, most helpful tool for making a realistic looking cloud. It's called a kneaded eraser. These are relatively cheap. You can get it for a dollar at um, a couple arts and crafts stores. I'm not sure about office stores. You, you may be able to find it. Don't know. But um, uh, I'll just make it kind of into a bald shape. And here's what I'll do with it. I'll take this and go to the tops of these clouds and I'll twist it in certain areas now, but I'll kind of keep it random as well just do a slight twisting like that and it helps to make the clouds look wispy and what that helps to also do is make them look like they're free floating and moving in the sky just like that now you don't want to really overdo it, but you're also going to go in with the uh, a smaller eraser. You can also use like an angle off a big eraser, or if you have one of those big pink erasers, you might be able to use that as well, but the white erasers work really well for this. I'm going to go in and uh, just work out some more of these highlights within some of these areas that I erased that with the kneaded eraser. that and uh, one other thing uh, you want to keep in mind when you're making clouds is where the source of light is and since I'm highlighting uh, the tops of these clouds uh, at the angle I am I'm having the light coming in at this direction like that also um, with this er eraser a really cool effect is if you start erasing away from the cloud something like this it kind of makes it look like it's floating away but this is a little bit too like popping uh, you know kind of in your face sort of you know it's really stands out uh, there's a lot of contrast there I'll take the uh, blending stump and just kind of go over it a little bit just to sort of subdue it make it a little more uh, subtle But I, I allow most of the details from my clouds to come out with the eraser. And I uh, try not to think too much about when I'm doing it. Because if you have too much control over the details of the clouds, I think it's going to start looking very artificial. Because uh, one thing to remember is that clouds are very free. You know, they're very uh, free-spirited in the sky. They're always floating around doing their own thing. You know, They're not really touched by mankind and not uh, artificial at all and um, just trying to keep a lot of freedom when drawing them is a good way to indicate you know just realistic looking clouds and it's uh, it took me a long time to really figure out how to do that this is where I'll use the uh, the big eraser is for these bigger areas I just want to erase out some bigger chunks that. I'll leave them kind of up in here. Something like that. So at this point, um, I got the, uh, the basic shape of the clouds that I like and it's really just fine tuning from here on out but just keep in mind you can overdo this so quickly so you just want to do things in stages something like that and then um, uh, 
to add in some distant clouds, you can use an eraser like this, or the knee eraser. I like to use this one, because you can take both hands and kind of make like a, a sharp edge on it. They can just go in and just go back and forth like this. And I'll add in some distant clouds. And then to kind of really push them back, I'll uh, take the blending sump, go over it again. It just helps to uh, really throw them back in the sky. It really pushes them a couple miles away there. Do another one like right here, something like that. And then usually at this point when I have the sky finished, then I'll go back in with the mountains and I'll uh, erase out where I've gone over them like this, just to kind of reestablish that line again. You know, just something like that. And then this is where I would take it and go and start doing the rest of the drawing. But uh, that's pretty much how I will draw clouds. It took me a while to figure it out. It took me a lot of practice, believe me. So don't be discouraged if you don't achieve this your first try around. Just give it a couple tries. I'm sure you'll get it. So I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you have any you know, ideas for future like little tutorials like this, just leave it in the comments. I'll read them and I'll respond to every single one of them. Also, follow me on Facebook. I have uh, quite a few pictures up on there, you know, with behind the scenes things, things like that. Uh, I'll put that down in the uh, description below. And I hope you all enjoyed this one, and I will see you all later. Please subscribe for future tutorials, alright? I will see you later. Take care.